Hello and welcome to a video from filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. I'm Chris with a K. The link is in the description to my website. And this is like the fourth or fifth time I've tried to record this video. Something keeps going wrong. The first time the audio was clipping and every time since then I've messed something up and done something out of order and it's throwing me off. We are going to push through even if I mess up. We're just going to keep going. And we are going to be installing RetroArch and setting it up, or RetroArch, depending on how you say it, on a Linux system, specifically a Debian or Debian-based system. Uh, and yes, we will be using the shell for at least the first part of this. Why? Not because we're on Linux, but because it's the easiest way to do most things. In fact, the difficult part of this is the second half, going through all the menus. In fact, one of the reasons I'm making this video is because every time I go to do it, I forget where things are in the menus. So I figure, make a video, make some notes, and that way in the future, uh, I will, you know, find where things are. So hello, future Chris, who may be watching this. Hopefully the notes are enough. But let's go ahead and I'm going to install RetroArch using our default repositories. It is in the Debian repositories, although there are some little um, hiccups you might hit installing it from the Debian repositories. So we will install that. Now, we are going to install RetroArch using apt. Again, that's my package manager. You use whatever package manager for your distribution. And it will install it. There are some questions about course. So Debian has a handful of cores in the repositories. You can search for them with Package Manager. We're going to use RetroArch to install them, but because there's more options that way, uh, but there, there will be some issues. You'll see, uh, or at least I'm uh, anticipating some issues. So we're going to now make a directory. I'm going to make a directory in my home directory called ROMs. And within that, I'm going to create some subdirectories, one for NES ROMs, MAME, Game Boy, and Sega. Boom, one command, I just created a bunch of directories. Not a problem. Let's go and now we will download some ROMs. Now, I'm probably not supposed to tell you where to get ROMs, but I will tell you this. There is an organization that archives these sort of things. You can call them an archiving organization. Just Google it. I think you can figure it out. So now that we have that going, I am going to just uh, start up RetroArch. And Give it a moment here to load. Now, normally when you go into RetroArch, the first thing you do is go to load core and there'll be an option to install cores. Debian has that disabled by default because they probably want you to install the ones from the repositories, which are good if those are the only ones you need. In fact, it's probably a safer, more secure way to do it. Uh, but again, there's only a, there's a limited uh, versions of them or numbers of them. Uh, but since we don't see that install cores here, we're gonna hit backspace. So we're gonna go over to system, user interface. Second option is menu item visibility. We're gonna choose that. We're gonna go down to this one that's unchecked. It says show core downloader. Now that we have that checked, we can hit backspace until we're back at our main menu. We'll go into load core and now we have download a core. And you can see our list of cores. I am going to type in S and I'm gonna type in MAME. Now there's different versions of MAME. Depending on which ROM you download, you need to get the proper version of MAME for the proper ROM you downloaded. That's something you've gotta figure out. Uh, where you download from will probably tell you, I'm just gonna install the newest version of MAME. It has the best licenses, GPL. Uh, and now you see when I did that, I'll do it again. It downloads it, but then we get an error that it was unable to install core. So it's downloading it, but it's trying to put it in a directory we don't have permission to write to. So let me go ahead and bring up my notes again here. And that is, uh, at least on the Debian-based system, USR lib x86, well, it depends on your processor type, uh, lib retro. So I'm just gonna change that to 777, which means you can read, write, and uh, execute from that directory. That's probably not the best um, permissions. There's, there's gonna be more secure ways to do it, but that's good enough for now. Okay, so now that we have that changed, now I can hit enter here. It will download it again, which only takes a second, and it should extract it no problem. There we go. We'll hit back, and we've only had to do that once. Now we're gonna hit S. I'm gonna type in NES, and many, many NES emulators. You just pick one, hit back, S. I'm gonna type in Game Boy, which is two words, otherwise it may not come up in your search. I'm just gonna choose the first one in the list, just because it's the first one in the list. And then I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna hit S, I'm gonna type in Sega. And I don't want Dreamcast for what I'm doing, I want the Mega Drive, also known as the Genesis. So I'm going to download that. Now I will go back and so let me go ahead and bring up my notes again and I'm actually going to move them off the screen here so I can read them without having to go back and forth to them but again there's a link to them in the description of this video. Whoops. Now uh, the next thing we want to do is a good idea is to go to the online updater. So under main menu online updater and in here uh, these bottom options for updaters we're going to just choose them all. We're just going to hit enter on each one of them. One of them will make the screen go black for a moment. Don't worry it will come back. It's just refreshing. 
Great. I'll hit back again to go back to our main menu. Now I'm going to hit over to this plus sign, which is content importer. We're in a scan a directory. I put my ROMs, as you saw earlier, in my ROMs directory. I'm going to hit enter on that and scan this directory. It's going to scan all the directories and it's going to make playlists. Uh, again, I only downloaded a handful of games, but now you'll see at the end here we have a picture of a Game Boy, a picture of a Nintendo controller, and a picture of a Sega controller. You'll notice MAME is missing. We will get to that. You'll also notice that there's no artwork. So let's go ahead and get some thumbnails and box art for these. So we're going to go back to the online updater. And here we can say playlist, which is what we just created, those three playlists, thumbnail updater. And we can choose each one of these and download uh, the box art. And depending on how many ROMs you have, that might take a little while. Uh, but once those are downloaded, we can go into them and you'll see, for example, uh, it's still downloading there. Let's go to our Game Boy here. We have artwork here. The Nintendo one, out of the three games I've downloaded, it only downloads the box art for one of them. And it probably it's just the way these files are named. Uh, in a moment, I'll show you how to manually install or put your own art there. Uh, I must have not hit the Sega button because it should. So online updater. So again, Thumbnail players, that's a great idea to download those, but every time you add new games, you'll have to do that again for the playlist. You can also choose this online, or sorry, on-demand thumbnail downloader. Once that is enabled, well now, as you go to the games, it will download them if there's no art. So it might take a moment, but we should get artwork for these games. There we go. And again, it could be a little slow, uh, and it could call, cause quirks if you're going through a bunch of games and trying to download a bunch of them. So. Better practice to download them all, you know, at once and get them all there, but you can enable that on demand and it will, as you add new games, as you go to them, they will show up. Now, again, two of these are missing box art. I'm going to go back over here to the main menu and there's this show desktop menu. When you choose that, it will bring up this window and we'll click OK and you can see your playlists over here. And I have my Nintendo Entertainment System and you can see we have the artwork for Mario here. Mario 3, uh, but two other games don't have the artwork. Well, you just have to drag and drop images here for the box art, uh, title screen, and uh, screenshots. So where do you get that artwork? Well, there's a link in my notes that brings you to here. It's thumbnails.libretro.com, and here you can just go to your system, so in this case, Nintendo system, and you can then choose whether you want the box art, uh, screenshots, or title uh, artwork. We can go through here and you just find the game, uh, whatever game you click on it, and there's the artwork for that, and you can download it and drag and drop it into that screen we're just at. Hopefully, the automatic downloader built into RetroArch will download what you need. But again, you'll notice that our main games are not here. Well, going back to my notes, there is a note in here for downloading what's called a DAT file. Uh, so I'm going to go back to my shell here, and I'll just open up a new shell here. And this is the command. Again, it's in the notes, but I'm going to download to my ROMs directory a file. I'm going to call it MAME.DAT. It's actually an XML file, which is the plain text file that's formatted with the game information for a whole bunch of games, but it has to be named .DAT or RetroArch will not see it. We'll go ahead and download that. Only takes a moment. And we will go here. And I may have already had it downloaded, so it might take a little bit longer, but only a couple of seconds. We can go back to our import content here, the little plus sign, and we're going to go down to manual scan this time. This time we're going to scan the content and we will choose a directory and we'll specifically choose the main directory. Otherwise, it's going to throw everything into uh, the, the main playlist. Uh, so I will scan this directory. Next, we'll choose content. Uh, directory, or no, no, the, the, the system name, that's what I want. And I will type an S and I will type in MAME and I will choose the one that just says MAME. And then I will come down here to the default core. You don't have to choose the default core, but then it will ask you for each game what you want the default core to be. We will just say use MAME. Uh, the only thing left we do is say use this DAT file. And we'll do that and we'll go wherever we saved it. Again, I saved it into my ROMs directory. That's MAME.DAT. Now we say start scan. Again, I only have two games in there. Three will show up, but one of them is not a game. Uh, so if I now go over here, you can see I have a main playlist. And the artwork should load up here because we have on demand listed. There we go. We have Miss Pac-Man and we have Street Fighter Alpha 2. Give it a moment and we'll upload. And then, I mean, download the file. And, and now they're on our system. They'll, they'll load quickly. This Q sound file, that is just a BIOS file that Street Fighter and a lot of other games need to play, I guess, their sounds is what it sounds like. Uh, so it shows up there, but it's not actually a game. Uh, so yeah, that is 
how to install RetroArch and get it up and running, thumbnails, box art, all that good stuff. Uh, the only other thing I might want to show you is under load cores, if you decide you don't want a core, maybe you install two different Nintendo cores and then you go, oh, I don't want this one, it's still there, you can leave it there, it's not a big deal. But if you want to remove it, you should, if I remember correctly, choose this and then we go to where it says core information and then core information and then down here we have delete core and that will remove it from our system and now we don't have that core anymore I'm going to go in here my Nintendo core is gone the Game Boy core is, is still there uh, but the Nintendo one is gone so again choose the core uh, you can go up or down so you get to information core information and then the bottom option you can just hit up to go to the bottom and delete core and now it's removed and then you can always install another one I really hope you found this useful. I know future me will. Again, links to everything I did, all the notes, uh, or there's a link to the notes of everything I did uh, in the description of this video. I really hope you found it useful. Uh, RetroArch is a great, great, great program, front end for all your emulators, but there's so many options. Sometimes it's hard to find what you're looking for, and I only touched you know, scratch the surface of all these options. So again, I thank you for watching. Filmsbychris.com, that's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description as always. I hope that you have a great day.